G'day folks, Rob here. Time for a bit of an update on the aquaponics and in particular the aquaponics spuds. And I might show you a rather a harsh method to look after aphids in the system as well. So I won't yammer on too much. I'll flip the camera around and give you a bit of a gander. Just to start off, we'll give you a bit of an overlook on the whole system. Uh, fairly happy with the way she's going. Uh, the tomato is continuing to grow out here on the trellis. It's actually over the edge now. Uh, the broccoli, I think I showed you the harvest from the last video, if not, um, actually no, I harvested some recently. I uh, got a couple of small heads out of there, about a meal's worth. Uh, over here, this um, perpetual spinach or chard is going really well. It's not spinach, it's a chard. Going really well, needs to be harvested again, as does the other just over there, next to the spuds that we'll look at in a minute. Um, yeah, but just to get on to the aphids to begin with, before we go show you the other bits. Um, I did have issues with them on these uh, perennial leeks in particular. Uh, every now and then I'll spot one or two, like those little fellas down there, and I just give them a bit of a squish. They were getting right down into all the um, leaf crevices. And what I was doing to control them was just spraying them with a soapy spray. It was actually um, uh, mint liquid soap that was in with the dye pool, uh, which we used to treat the cabbage butterflies. And I was just spraying that across here. And yeah, that seemed to look after the small outbreak we were having. But over here in this bed, we had a clump of chives that was absolutely infested with those little black onion aphids. Uh, they were crawling all through it. We've just been using the chives up on the deck. So this little uh, clump here didn't get much attention. I had been spraying this with the peppermint soap, uh, just a straight peppermint soap spray, hoping that that would get them under control. Uh, it sort of knocked them down a little bit, but there was no way I was getting it into all the little nooks and crannies between the leaves. So I decided a drastic action was needed and yeah, took it upon myself to remove the whole clump from the bed. Excuse the shaky camera work, I only have two hands. Took it down the back and blasted it with the jet from the hose just to crush the little aphids and also knock the majority of them off. And I also decided to give it a bit of a haircut at the time as well and we used some of those chives in the meal that night. And then yeah, it was just as easy as bringing them back and plopping them back in the system here. And as you can see, they have put on a little bit of growth since I've done that. And all I'm doing is coming down and giving them the once over. You might be able to make out, if I can get in the sunlight, that little cluster of aphids down there. And all I've been doing is just coming along and squishing them, making sure um, I give it a good go over. So most of these aphids, at a guess, I would say, uh, were knocked off and into the clay when I took them down the back. And yeah, they've just crawled back on as soon as I've popped it back in the bed. I'm going to give it another spray with the mint soap later on today. Um, it's going to have some dipel in there as well because um, I need to treat the brassicas here too. And I'll make sure that I can get down in all those little nooks and crannies. And yeah, hopefully, if I keep doing that every couple of days, um, yeah, we'll be able to get on top of these guys. It's just one of those things. Um, this stuff grows really, really quickly and creates a lot of hidey holes for these aphids. So they, they tend to have a little bit of a run of the show. Um, around the corner here, um, we did have another outbreak. Just down here on my garlic, which obviously I haven't checked as regularly as I thought I had, we have another outbreak. And as you can see, those aphids are just falling off. Um, I don't know whether it's a uh, self-preservation thing. Those ones there as well, just falling off into my hands. So these garlic have been hit as well. Um, these have had one or two little treatments with the dipole. But I didn't come back here the other day. Oh, there you go. Hopefully that phone's focusing now, but there, just look at that all under there on that garlic. So give these guys a good um, squish. Uh, this garlic though, I'm not too concerned over because as you can see, it's all sort of limp and falling over and needs to be harvested very soon. Actually have a veggie pod full of garlic down the back that's all but died off now, and that needs to be harvested as well. I might do that next week and I'll throw up a bit of a video for you all to check out. I've just noticed we got some up here on the red onions as well. So I'm really gonna have to, um, yeah, get serious about these guys again, I think. Um, but yeah, they don't uh, appear to be affecting any other plants. I don't see them on the uh, little broccoli here. Got some more little um, side shoots coming through or on the um, chard. I did have some over here on this lettuce a couple of weeks ago. I think I showed it in a recent video, but they've all but disappeared. I see one or two in there, um, but these guys are gonna be coming out soon anyway. We might leave one in to go to seed like we are doing with another lettuce, but yeah, I think I might just leave them be for now. I just brushed against the dill. Jeez, I love that smell. And just quickly, something else I did in this bed here was I had a nasturtium that was just taking over this corner here. 
and it was um, going to create a few hassles, especially when it comes to adding additives in, um, like the, the iron and bits and pieces. I'd like to add it in here at the inflow. So rather than just pulling her out and throwing her in the compost pile, I decided to transplant her. Now I did have concerns that it was go wasn't going to survive the transplant, just being such a big plant and having the roots damaged, pulling it out through the clay. So I gave it a fairly radical um, haircut and popped it into the potato bathtub. And as you can see, she's bouncing back nicely. We've even got a couple of blooms open. Oh, well, we had a, another bloom open, but there's one open there today. And we've got some new growth down the bottom there. So yeah, I'm pretty happy that she's bounced back. And hopefully I can get her to grow more over this way and have her cascade over the end here. Pretty the place up a little bit. Uh, onto the spuds. Well, the spuds, as you can see, are doing rather well. I can't really see because of the glare in the phone screen. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with the way they're going. Um, I had a couple that I had to remove though. First off, the one that was growing in front of this pouch here had to come out. The spud itself had started to get really, really mushy. Um, so I decided just to remove it. Um, I could have possibly kept growing without the mother's spud on there. But I just figured if there was any disease in there, yeah, it could cause a few issues. Uh, also down here, in this end um, pouch that had the uh, well has the coconut coir in there, uh, that one there had started to die back the little shoot, so I pulled it out and found the same thing. It was getting a little bit mushy as well. I also topped this uh, pouch up with some more coir. I topped up the center one with some more soil, and also over here at this end one with the clay. And the second spud in this though is doing okay. It is suffering from a bit of lack of sunlight, just a couple of small shoots out the side but hopefully, fingers crossed, it will uh, pick up. So overall, um, yeah, fairly happy with the way the potatoes are going. I don't know if it's because the environment was just too damp in there and that's why they rotted, or um, because I've had three now, one from the coir, one from the soil, and one from that clay just sitting in the bed, or whether, you know, just being a store-bought potato, there may have been a bit of disease in there. And just to give you a quick look at these um, water chestnuts down here, I'm getting a little bit um, crowded out by the spud but they appear to be doing okay, all three of them. Oh, well, there's more than three there now, but I uh, only started out with the three corms. So pretty chuffed about that. So just before we move on to the next bed, folks, I just wanted to take a second to thank all you folks who've jumped on board and bought our Backyard Aquaponics Beginner's Guide. Thank you very much, folks. And I'm really chuffed to say that I've had some great feedback. We've got people jumping on board and asking me questions, uh, bits and pieces they can't quite get their head around. So there is that functionality in the guide as well. It's online, totally interactive. There'll be a link up there and also down in the description if you want to check it out. There's a bit of a live demo page over on my website. Um, happy to say that it's also been translated into Portuguese, Spanish, Hindi and Chinese. पोषक तत्वों से भरपूर पानी जो धीरे-धीरे बिस्तर से गुजर रहा है। And we are looking at more languages down the track. So yeah, uh, thank you very much to all you folks again who have purchased the guide and feel free to check it out if you are interested in yeah seeing what it's all about. Uh, enough spruiking of my wares. In this bed here, I've popped the shade back over because I planted some seedlings out. But before we look at them, I'll give you a look at the beans. The beans are doing rather well, and in fact, we should be taking off our first harvest tonight. I won't be a huge one, you'll be able to um, just chop them up, slice them up and throw them in a bit of a green salad. So, pretty stoked about that. And these are the beans by the way, they're all just um, growing out of the punnet they were bought in and I just shoved down into the clay. So a bit of an experiment, see how they go. I mean, um, if this was soil, they definitely wouldn't do too well because they'd all be fighting for nutrients. But as this is um, aquaponics, all the nutrients is freely flowing around their roots. And you can see some more little babies coming on there, some more flowers. So looking good so far. Just around the corner here, I'll let one of the um, uh, cos go to seed. Um, just grab a few more seeds because we haven't seen many volunteers pop up. I've seen one pop up over there. And I think it's actually one of these guys here. So um, I like lettuce just to go to seed in the bed. Like I said, maybe let one of them go to seed just so we can have continuing, uh, continual crop of lettuce come up. Um, we might be able to see a couple of new plants in here. We have a little row of bok choy just going around the corner here and we have some miniature cabbages in there. Now the bok choy, I'm not too you know, worried about planting multiple bok choy out in one um, position in the aquaponics. I've done it before and they tend to grow really well together, um, pretty much all along the same um, lines as those beans over there. 
very close together but there's so much nutrient flowing past the roots so I don't need to compete for it. So I think that planting there has three, this one here has three, this one has two, that planting has two, two there and two over here. Um, with the uh, cabbage the same thing, um, all the cells came with four seedlings in every cell. So all I did was um, just give them a bit of a wash out in a tub of water, uh, just slowly um, move them backwards and forwards, try and get as much of the potting soil out of there, and then gently divide the roots, and then yeah, just um, pop them in their individual places here. And as you can see, they have put on a nice little bit of growth, and there's more of them over here. I think there's six more over in that bed over there. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, there's six little plantings, two over there and four just down in here. Um, and with the leftover uh, bok choy, I planted them out yesterday actually on the deck. I just, again, I just had the punnet sitting in the bed there um, just so they would stay hydrated. Um, planted them out on a little hydro cracky tub on the deck. So yeah, um, hopefully they'll take off well. Just quickly while we're talking hydro, I uh, wanted to give a shout out to another fantastic YouTube channel. He's actually based here in South East Queensland as well, Hucho, a hydroponics based channel. He's actually just done a small harvest on some hydroponic potatoes. Um, so check out the video. I'll actually leave a link to it up there and his channel and the video link down in the description if you want to suss him out. Hopefully, uh, we'll see how we go, fingers crossed. I might get to meet up with Hucho and we might do a little bit of a collaboration and get him to teach me a little bit more about hydroponics. So do check out Hucho's channel and I will give you a bit of a gander at the bok choy up on the deck in a clip next week or the week after, just when it puts on a little bit of growth. Uh, as for the rest of the system here, or mainly the fish, well, you're not going to get a look at them today because I popped some kelp into the system. Oh, you might be able to make out some shadows. And the kelp just tends to um, turn the water very, very dark uh, for a day or two. It puts a, basically a tannin in the system. A bit hard to see down there in the sump as well. Uh, but those fine particulates just settle out in the beds after a day or two. They're feeding fairly well now. The water temp is up around about 21 uh, mid-morning here by this afternoon, hopefully around about 23, 24, and I'll toss some food in for them then. And the pH, uh, if you've been a regular viewer, you'll know it's been a little bit high lately. Well, it's starting to come down by itself now. And that is because with the warmer weather, uh, the fish are feeding better and that nitrification process slowly uh, decreases alkalinity which drops the pH in the system. But overall, I'm pretty happy with the way things are going. Oh, just a little bit of an update on um, the new system uh, when it will be going in. Uh, we had a mate come around the other day, Stephen. Thank you very much, mate. He um, cut down the level on the driveway so he can finish the driveway. Once it's finished, all the rocks in the tubs over there can be put on the driveway and I can clear that area out and we can start working on the new aquaponic system. So um, any concreters in southeast Queensland, uh, hit me up in the um, comments down below if you want a job putting in a couple of car treads down the driveway. Um, if not, hopefully I may have found someone by the time this video goes live to YouTube. But yeah, um, that system there I would really like to have up and running by the end of the year. I just need to get all the other bits and pieces done first. So I hope you've enjoyed that little bit of a gander at the system, folks. Uh, once again, I really do need to thank you all for coming along and sussing out these videos every week. And I'm really looking forward to starting that new build um, so we can post some more content. I'm just showing you guys how to get a system knocked up from where to go. So yeah, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And fingers crossed YouTube will send you a notification when those videos get posted to the platform. Uh, also, I'd like to thank all you folks who are supporting us through the YouTube membership program and the Farm Your Own Yard supporters page. There might be a bit of an update coming there soon, folks. So if you're a supporter, um, yeah, I'll keep you posted over on the website there. And yeah, I think I will pretty much all leave it there. I do hope you're all well and happy and your gardens are booming and I'll catch you later. Cheers, folks, and happy growing. So this is what happens when you get carried away playing with the aquaponics while you're topping up the top-up tank. Oops.